Since wastegates control boost, and compound turbos make a ton of boost, what happens when you forget to hook up your wastegate line on a compound turbo 4 8 Let's find out. That's right, it's finally here. Full results on a compound turbo system on the 4.8 in this video, we'll cover the modifications we made to the exhaust to route all that exhaust energy up to the big turbo. In addition to that, we cover a full install and all the dyno testing, including changes we made to the wastegates and controllers to get it all working. Somewhere in there, we'll also talk about the mistake I made by not hooking up the wastegate reference line and what stepped in to save me. To make the necessary modifications to our Y-pipe, to get all that heat energy up to the second turbo, we took our complete assembly over to Topeat Mufflers. It required cutting, a little swedging, some tube bending, and of course some welding. After the swedging and bending, the tubing was mocked in place. Then secured together. With everything in place, they tacked up the final mock-up. After finished welding, our tubing was ready to test. Okay guys, look what we got done today. Yeah. Get all of our exhaust from the wastegate. That one. And our cross tube. That one. Coming all up into here, and we're going to mount the turbo right, right there. It'll all be perfect. So, our motor's on the dyno. We've already run it. It worked really well. Ran a turbo. It's got a white pipe back on with our new fancy compound turbo. As you can see, we've got our custom white pipe on. Got all the exhaust right out to this big turbo. And here's something I did mention before in the first video. We do have a wastegate controlling the boost for this bigger turbo. I don't know if it's big enough. We'll have to see. We may, might have a rising boost curve. So now work on the inlet system. My goal when installing the cold side on any turbo system is to use existing tubing without having to cut anything. A good example is this piece right here. It's actually the blow off valve section from a Torque Storm supercharger kit, but it just happened to be the right length. So it fits perfectly and should allow me to install the inner part. Like a glove. Okay guys, I think we figured out something for the discharge side. Connect the big turbo to the small turbo. Let's get it installed. So right now I have no blow off valve. Although I mentioned one earlier before, but it was right next to the other one. It was already there, duh. So save the comments. Actually make the comments. Tell me why I'm an idiot 
for putting two bypass valves on the other side and none on this side. Do I need one here? Let me know in the comments. And make sure to like and share, guys. Come on, what's up with that? And a little pumpy 85 for the 4.8. I think we've got everything hooked up. We've got all of our exhaust routed from the Y pipe into the small turbo. The exhaust going out of there, feeding the big turbo. We have the secondary pipe coming from the wastegate controlling the small turbo, feeding all of that exhaust from the wastegate up into the big turbo. Now we have two wastegates down here, both of them have seven pound springs on them. Right now, we've got a wastegate reference line just you know directly to the tube. We have no controller on any of them. On the third wastegate, which I didn't mention in one of the videos, I have a reference line going to that wastegate. That wastegate also has a seven pound spring in it. So we're gonna try that and see what happens. The thing that I'm concerned about is all of the wastegates are the same size. So we may have too small of a wastegate controlling the big turbo. We'll see, maybe we have a rising boost curve. But we're just gonna have to find out. But I think everything's ready. We've got everything hooked up. Rather than just provide a graph for you to look at, I thought I'd take you through this on my laptop because we've got a lot of stuff to cover. This is what the boost curve looks like when you don't run a reference line to the wastegate between the big turbo and the small turbo. Now this is actually the second run because on the first one, I lifted off the throttle. I saw the boost shooting up and got off the throttle just to be safe. But on the second run, I let it go since the air, fuel, and timing were spot on. We let it keep going and as you can see it leveled off at 17 pounds. Now with no line to the wastegate, why did it level off? Well what stepped in to save me was actually back pressure. With only a 7 pound spring in that gate, back pressure actually opened that gate up and came in to save me and said hey when you're going to do something stupid, we're going to look after you. So that thing leveled it off at 17 pounds. Let me show you what it looks like when we added the line back to the wastegate. Go through here, search through this stuff with the line. See, with seven pound springs in all the wastegates, we had about seven pounds, and that works out good. The only problem is that back pressure helped save me, but it was also working against us because we tried to turn the boost up by installing a manual wastegate controller on the small turbo and electronic controller. On the, on the wastegate between the big turbo and the small turbo. And that electronic controller was a three, port, a three port, meaning it had reference lines both to the top and the bottom of the gate. But even with that, we actually didn't have much control. We couldn't turn the boost up much more than this. So we needed to do something and to fix that situation and go up and boost, we decided to put more spring pressure in that wastegate between the big turbo and the small turbo. Here's how we did it. Hey guys, we're making some runs on the compound turbo 4.8 liter. And it's working pretty well. The one problem we're having is controlling boost. Not that there's too much, there's not enough. The way we're controlling it now is we have two wastegates in the front for the small turbo. We've got a, a wastegate reference line going to it with a manual controller on it. It's got one turn on it, so it's set for seven or eight pounds. On this rear wastegate, we have an electronic wastegate controller on it. And no matter how much we turn it up, we can only get about 15 or 16 pounds. And the reason for that is this thing has real high back pressure. Not surprising given that small little turbo. So now we're gonna pull this seven pound spring. And as it turned out, a big spring wasn't gonna work. But we do have this. What we're gonna do is double it.
After installation of the spring in that wastegate between the big turbo and small turbo, we had much better control and we could raise the boost. So here's what happened when we ran 11 pounds. And this is the NA motor. You see down here, made a little over 400 horsepower. This is the turbo motor at 11 pounds. 618 was the power peak there. So now let's see what happened when we were able to go up and boost. That's 14 pounds. That's 18 pounds. And finally 21 pounds. And as you can see on the 21 pound run, we actually started to drop boost. And the same thing was happening. We actually didn't put enough spring in that rear wastegate between the big turbo and the small turbo. We could stick even more, more spring in there and we would be able to control this up higher, but we were already at uh, 800 and 844 horsepower. So it was doing good. Let's check out the boost curves here. Take a look at that. So that's 11, that's 14. Didn't want to open 18 there, so that was 21. So we've got 11, 14, 18, and 21 pounds. You can see they ramp up about the same. They just level off We're using that electronic controller, nice and smooth, except right in here, where we start having a falling boost curve. And that's that wastegate open, opening um, between the big turbo and the small turbo. So if we had more spring in there, I think we'd be able to control this up even higher. But just to get the compound turbo system up and running and running 21 pounds was awesome. Uh, let's take a look now at some back pressure. Now that we've talked about boost pressure, let's take a look at back pressure. So this is our 11 pound run. We'll take a look. We see that this is boost pressure down here, 11.4 pounds of boost pressure. And we've got 25.3 pounds of back pressure. So more than a two to one relationship between boost pressure and back pressure. Remember, this, this measurement was taken in the Y pipe before the small turbo. So let's take a look at the back pressure between the big turbo and the small turbo. So if we compare this to say our, let's go to our 18 pound run. So look, we've got 18.2 pounds of boost, but only 23.4 pounds of back pressure. So even at a much higher boost level, we have less back pressure between the two turbos than we have before the small turbo. And that's with us routing a lot of that exhaust around the small turbo into the big turbo. Now this just shows you how important it is to size the turbos properly for a compound system. The final thing we wanna look at, and you guys might be wondering, why don't you just raise the boost on the small turbos to improve the response rate? I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's the boost curve with seven pound springs uh, and just a wastegate reference line on the small turbos. And then you can see what we're doing with the big turbos there. We got over 17 pounds, but here's what happens when we put a controller on the primary turbo or the small turbo and raise the boost up. You can see we get much better response and we can do that. We can continue to do that and you can see that even though we've raised the boost, let's say at 4,500, we've gone from 11.3 pounds up to 17.8 pounds. So we picked up over six pounds of boost there, but out here at the top, where the big turbo is primarily responsible for what's going on, we had less than a, a pound of boost change. Now we could continue to raise this here by uh, adjusting our wastegate controller, but the problem is that we just didn't want a lot of torque there on the load in because this thing still had the, 
the stock block and factory crank and uh, factory rods. So we don't need a big load in torque number, but you can, if you want, raise that up so you get good response, which is one of the great things from the compound turbo system. So you can adjust, we have two controllers. You can adjust what's happening on the low side and what's happening on the high side. As long as you have enough spring in that wastegate controlling the big turbo. So the big question now is, how much power did it make? Well, if we take a look at the NA motor, we were like 409, and then run at the highest boost level, which was 21 and a half pounds. She was up near 850, 849 and change, which in today's LS world, I mean, heck, we made 1540 with a stock bottom end six liter, so it may not seem like much, but it worked out well for me. I mean, I got to learn a lot about compound turbo systems. I got to learn the importance of properly matching the turbos. We got to play with the wastegates and springs and controllers. So it was nothing but good for me. I got it working and it worked out well. And now it's time I can move on. So guys, make sure to like and share and do all that stuff. Ring the bell, make some comments. Tell me what else you want to see. Tell me what I did right on this and what I did wrong. See you in the next video.